Welcome back. We're here for the first shout of the Art of Benching series. We hope you enjoyed that intro that of course is Shamba from all over the world sharing a photo of them benching. So I think we're just about ready. Jeff is getting ready. Adamas has been around quite a bit yesterday and today and before. So we're really ready. So to truly be ready, let's start with the conscious breath the conscious breath of life. Take the good deep breath and let the energies flow. Breathe, breathe with feeling and allowing. Breathe, the I am here, I exist. Breathe and choose the safe space. It's simply a matter of choosing it. Take the good deep breath Good deep breath. Feel that air moving through the body, the energy throughout. Breathing the human and the master. Take the good deep breath. Take the good deep breath and feel into it as we go forward. Ready for Adamas. Sitting in the morning sun And I'll be sitting when the evening comes So just watching the ships roll in And then I'll watch them roll away again Oh, I'm just sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll away Ooh, sitting on the dock of the bay I left my home in Georgia Headed for the Frisco Bay Cause I had nothing to live for And look like nothing's gonna come my way So I'm just a sitting on the dock of the bay Watching the tide roll
I am that I am, Adamus of Sovereign Domain. Oh crap, oh crap, that's just what Sartre said, just as we were coming in with the music, feeling into the energies of this new series, the Art of Benching series. Oh crap, uh, I've got Sartre here, I've got FM here, I've got so many of the Chambra who left before we got to the park bench. By, by the way, dear Linda Avisa, you look just lovely on the park bench, just lovely. Thank you. Oh, we've got Timothy and Doxy and Edith and so many of the Chambra who, who left. Uh, they're on the other side, some truly ascended masters. Some simply chose to come back in another lifetime to continue the work that you, Shambhar, are doing right now in this lifetime. They weren't quite ready for that full realization. They chose not to, actually. They chose to come back again, but I've got them here today for the opening of our new series, The Art of Benching. They're excited about it. I'm excited about it because this is exactly where we're supposed to be, with exactly the right people, exactly the right time on the planet. We're here. We, we made it. We've arrived. The, the train pulled into the station at just the right moment, not a, not a moment too soon, not a moment too late, with just the right passengers, you. We've gone through so many years now of discussions, talking about uh, issues, past lives, problems, talking about the world, talking about physics and energy and consciousness and doing a lot of releasing uh, and a lot of allowing. That's been, that's been a different, difficult one. You know sometimes you release and it, it just comes right back at you. But with your continual allowing of the releasing, pretty soon it, it, it just leaves. Old issues and old problems stuck energies. It just, it just leaves. And it returns back to a natural state of energy, no longer stuck in its, in its old form, in its difficult, challenging form, no longer stuck, but now here, energy ready to serve you. Now we're here at this epic time on the planet, at this beautiful time for Chambra, the time of the art of benching. It, it took a while to get here, but we are here. And now the real, well, I don't even want to call it work, but the real mashing begins, the art of benching. And, and indeed, they found a beautiful bench for me and a beautiful uh, hostess to accompany me. Kind of Everything is here, this, this uh, bench. We're here at Villa Amio in, in this beautiful place of Kona. I have everything except my coffee. Oof. Now, you may see this Hawaiian coffee mug here uh, on the stage with me, but this is some strange concoction that, uh, that Caldra drinks. Uh, it's fungus or something like that. So, dear Carrie. She's already off. Yes, dear Carrie. I love. I will get you your coffee. <laughs> dear Carrie's on her way to get coffee. I enjoy a good cup of coffee. Um, we, we have coffee at the Ascended Masters Club, of course, but nothing like the human coffee with its strength and sometimes even its bitterness and its jolt and um, plenty of caffeine. So, dear Carrie is here running to get coffee right now. Yes, she is. And it's Thank quite you. a run. It's quite a run. She has to, it's not just right next door. But that's important to have that. Of course. So, I say you, you we've arrived at this very special place and very special time. So much has, has come before getting here. Lifetimes of, lifetimes of working on things. And I can say now, uh, there's no longer any work necessary. And did you ever notice that when you were working on things, they, uh, they just seemed to battle back at you. The working really didn't really didn't do any good. Working at things and struggling with them and suffering through them really doesn't work. It's ultimately a matter of just allowing. Just allowing. 
there's probably still residues, and, and some of you still may be almost addicted to working on your problems, but I'll be encouraging you in my own gentle, charming way to uh, not do that anymore. If there's problems in your life, and I don't care what it is, a relationship or health or abundance or anything, self-worth, if there's a problem, simply go beyond it. Uh, don't focus on it. Don't fight it. It's on its way out right now. It's only when you give it that attention, when, when you get uh, embattled with it, that it, it sticks around. Because as I've said, rather politely, uh, if it's still there, there must be something that you're loving about it. And now's the time to just let it go. You'll find that uh, even, even illness is yes. Uh, something you think is so embedded in your body, some, some disease or illness, don't battle with it. Don't, don't try to coddle it. Don't give it attention. Just realize it's a vestige from the past. It's on its way out. Don't worry about how it leaves, how it goes. It's on its way out. Because now you're here, well, for the Mashin, the very reason you came to this planet in this lifetime. And, and it wasn't just about, uh, it wasn't about enlightenment. I mean, that, that's a kind of, you could say, a kind of a side benefit. It was about being here to do what we're going to be doing now in this Art of Benching series. We're going to be benching, radiating the light. It actually didn't start here. We've been doing it for a while in, in subtle ways. We've been doing it for quite a while, as you saw with um, uh, Journey and Metatron's Starboat uh, that they talked about before. Uh, we did it back then with Metatron going into the other realms, the realms of the, uh, the disincarnate beings who wander in the other realms, uh, lost, stuck in their own darkness, but loving it, I will say. And I, I would keep saying that, uh, and I know some of you roll your eyes and get mad, but even if you're a disincarnate entity, you're off in the other realms, you're a ghost or a spook. Uh, aimlessly wandering the other realms. There's something you're still loving about doing it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing it. That's such an important point now for any of you with any issue in your life, whatever the issue is. There's something that is still giving you that, that pleasure in a strange way. Well, even a suffering can be a form of pleasure. It's still giving you something. Let's go beyond all that right now. This is where we want to be, in the park bench on the park bench, the exact reason why you came here. Let's take a good deep breath with that as we launch into our new series, The Art of Benching. Before we dive deeply into it, we will be doing experiences every, every shout with, uh, with benching. And it's not that we need to talk a lot or teach you a lot about it, but I want, I want to gather Shambra once a month. You, you'll be doing it on your own, of course, but I want to gather Shambra once a month to do this most compassionate thing uh, for you and for the planet. Uh, we'll be having talks and discussions, of course, but in each one of our shouts, we're going to be doing some benching. And we're going to be letting our light radiate out, l like it did in uh, the, the journey of Metatron's starboat, just not going into the other realms to try to save or rescue these lost beings, but simply to be a light there. And there are truly always enough, even a small number, large number, but there's always enough entities, and there'll be enough humans that are open to this light. They don't, won't know where it's coming from, and it doesn't come with an agenda, it doesn't come with um, instructions, or it doesn't come with any sort of uh, payback that they have to do. But they're going to be noticing something, and we're going to be looking uh, in this year uh, of benching, we're going to be looking at the changes that come about the planet. Sometimes not always easy changes, sometimes very difficult ones, but we're going to be observing the changes as a direct result of the benching and the radiating of your light. Uh, thank you, dear Carrie. My coffee is finally thank here. You, my darling. Isn't it amazing that you just happened to be here on the island to help with the coffee? Oh, if you would, um, oh, and chocolates to go. Um, Calder would like a little cream in there. I'd be happy to. Basi, thank you, thank you. And my chocolates, but let's get back to the point. 
the art of benching. Uh, please, dear Linda, have a, uh, don't have a seat, uh, because I'm going to ask you to write on the board. Uh, no, uh, be, be ready to write on the board. Well, we're, I'm ready. So okay. before we uh, get into the actual benching, I want to talk about I want to talk about Adama Maddox. And if you would write that on the board, Linda, it could be fairly large. We won't be writing too many other things on the page. Adama Maddox. And what is, what is Adama Maddox? Well, it's kind of like Adamonomics. That was my take on uh, economics. This is Adamus Mathematics. And if you would write that underneath, Adamus Mathematics. You know, I have my own take on things you probably recognized. Uh, and here I want to talk a little bit about mathematics, not, not, in, uh, not in very complex terms, actually pretty simple terms, but uh, thank you. That's Adama Maddox, Adama Maddox, Adama's Mathematics. And on the next page, Linda, if you would please, you'll be up there for a little bit, uh, so stay put. But on the next page, we're going to be talking today about the nature of zero. Nature of hero? The nature of zero. The nature Not of zero. Not hero, but zero. The nature of zero. And here we go. My coffee, Caldra's cream in the coffee, and we're set to go. Thank you, dear Carrie. Thank you. The nature of zero. The nature of zero. Most of you are familiar with zero. You know, zero has not been a part of mathematics for well, really uh, not that long. Uh, I would say barely over about 500 years. So humanity has gone all this time with no zero. And finally, somebody discovered zero. Isn't it kind of interesting that uh, it all has to do with consciousness? Things aren't discovered till consciousness is ready, even though they're sitting right there in front of you. It's the same with the Atlanteans, really didn't see the stars barely really uh, perceived the sun and the moon. They knew it was there, but the stars uh, wasn't even in their consciousness. Same with zero. Same with zero. It just hasn't, wasn't in consciousness until, I, I would say, actually about 800 years ago. And then it was just a great big theory, and it, it was subject to a lot of debate. Uh, there were a lot of um, people that said zero, uh, there is no zero. It has to start somewhere. Others said zero is actually really not a number, which actually it's really not. It's not really a number, but it's, it's the zero point. It's the, it's the beginning point. Feel into zero for a moment. And Linda, would you draw just a big zero right there underneath the, the written word zero? Feel into zero for a moment. It's a fascinating non-number, but it's associated with mathematics. Zero. And that's where we're going with this art of benching, to zero, back to zero. Let me explain it a little bit more, Linda, on the board, please. Okay. Just when she thinks she's getting a rest. And if you would draw in the center of the page, uh, maybe approximately six inches tall, uh, a zero. A nice round zero. There you go. Good. And then if you would to the right side, extending out a plus one, plus two, plus three, just going from left to right uh, off the side, like off the east part of the zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and so on and so forth. Off the left side of the zero, the west side, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, so on and so forth. And then on the north, or the top of the zero, uh, a little carrot, uh, a carrot going up. Uh, carrot one, two, three, four, five, six okay. going up. Uh, just a little, yeah, like that. Good, good. And then underneath, the carrot going down, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is real simple, uh, Adamus, <laughs> Adamus uh, Mathematics. Adama Madama, ma, can't even say that. So, and now, Linda, to top it all off, would you put a dot in the middle of that zero? A dot. That's the zero point. That's, that's you, essentially. And every number on that board that uh, Linda has drawn, uh, every number represents an experience 
or an aspect or a reality. Now the fact is, most humans, uh, they, they have a very linear, uh, kind of a, I would say, like a left to right reality base. Mathematics are generally based on this here. And you can combine these numbers, or add them, subtract them, uh, divide them, whatever you want to do, you can multiply them. You can combine them to create uh, an experience. You can take a, a one and a three and put it together and you got four, and you can put a four and a 10 together and 14 and divide that by seven, whatever you want to do. But this is symbolic of kind of the nature of reality. This could also be your past lives. Uh, perhaps you would place that on the left side of the zero. Your past lives uh, all lined up. Past experiences is really what they are. And then I had Linda draw the numbers on the top and the bottom extending uh, up and down because the reality, uh, and even mathematics, doesn't just go in a linear format, either uh, left to right or right to left. The reality is also all around. And if you really wanted to uh, be accurate in, in this example, there would be numbers placed all around the board. So then you just randomly put numbers uh, anywhere you want, anywhere on the board, Any except order, in the zero. Right. With what? Any number, anywhere you want. It doesn't need anything in front of it, uh, but except don't put it inside the zero, okay. but anywhere you want. Okay. So basically this says that uh, Every, every number or combination of numbers is a experience or a reality. You can have experiences uh, independent of being locked into a reality form. You can go off and have an experience, which oftentimes you do at night in your dream state. You can go off and have an experience and it's not locked into a reality like this human, very linear reality that we have right now. Ultimately, it all comes back to zero, back to the center, which oddly enough now looks like a circumpunt or the symbol for consciousness. You can go out and have all these experiences, these combination of numbers, most of the time, as I said, the humans, they stay in this realm. If you just underline that, Linda, to indicate most uh, and put an arrow at the right end of it. Most humans look at life very linearly uh, and they, they incarnate back along that same linear line. They combine the numbers in a variety of different ways. And again, the numbers simply represent experience or um, uh, or it could be an aspect or lifetime, but they start combining the numbers and the numbers could go into the billions and trillions and whatever. Uh, they can get very, very complex. And, and then you have, uh, uh, you have all the different ways of dividing or calculating with the numbers. It's the same way of saying in your life, you're picking energy. Uh, in this case on the board, it's numbers. You're picking energies, combining them, merging them together to create your experiences. But at the basis of all this is zero, which actually is not a number, it's simply a, a starting point. What humans don't generally do, and excuse me, I'm having to walk around uh, Belle here because she's very, very comfortable and feeling very safe in our, in our location. <laughs> but what humans don't do is experience in, in these other realities. They, they stay on this level. It's comfortable, it's safe, they're used to the physical reality, but you could be going up and down, you could be, well, this could be your past lives that you could be experiencing right now if you chose to, but generally not, you're focused on this. You could be out here just scattered all around having an experience independent of a specific reality. And the point of all this is ultimately you always go back to zero. Zero is not really zero. It's just a beginning point. Zero is not a number that you combine with other numbers. Zero is not a number that you use to divide other numbers. It's a placeholder in a way. It's, it's a beginning point of experience. And the reason why I bring this up uh, at this show today and the importance of it is that's what we're doing. 
we're going back to zero. It doesn't mean we're starting all over because you've had all these other experiences that are kind of uh, shown uh, on the on the board, but all these other experiences. But now we come back to zero. Zero is not filled with any numbers per se, but zero now has a tremendous amount of wisdom. And zero now coming back to that as a starting place, you now realize you don't have to to have a new experience, you don't have to get back on the linear human, the plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. You can choose whatever you want, and you can experience it however you want. Uh, you can do it in a variety of different realms if you want. Take a moment to feel into zero again. Not a number. You don't combine it with the others, but it's always that beginning point, uh, what humans often call the zero point. That's where we're at. You've had all these experiences in this lifetime. You've run the gamut of of this linear experience uh, for many, many, many lifetimes, and now we're back at the zero point. What does that mean? It means You've gone very deep within yourself. You've explored the core of really who you are. You've taken a very, very deep dive uh, in this lifetime, in addition to having a lot of experiences, but you've gone very deep within. You've come back to, to this point, the zero point. You're still carrying some vestiges of uh, old wounds and old issues with you as as we come back here, those will dissolve away. Um, please, as I said earlier, don't work at them. Don't force them. Don't use techniques. Uh, don't, don't try to mantra them out of your life. Don't try to use healers. These will simply dissolve away. Even the most stuck issues. Uh, some Shambras still have issues with abundance. Uh, these will simply dissolve away. The moment you get in and start trying to figure it out, or you wrestle with them uh, or, or, or beat them, uh, they're just going to persist. They're going to stick around. But if you just take a deep breath and you realize all these things now are just going to melt away, you're coming back to the zero point. You're coming back to your own consciousness after journeying out into this universe and this cosmos of numbers which really are just experiences, you're coming back to the zero point. That's the park bench. That's, that's the park bench. It's the zero point that we come back to. Now you're here to, to do the real thing you came here to do. The important thing, once again, is don't, don't engage with issues. Uh, and I know some of you are just, you get a little hot under the collar because I don't know, perhaps you want to engage with them, you want to suffer, you can't believe it would be this easy. It is. The moment you engage with a physical issue, in other words, you're trying to figure it out or you're obsessing on it or you're trying to figure out uh, some new alternative cure or something else, uh, you're right back into it and it's not going to dissolve away because this issue, just think of it as one of these numbers, says, oh, well, you still want me around because you're, you're engaging with me, so I'm going to stick around. If you realize you're coming back to the zero point, it's you, it's consciousness, consciousness that ultimately commands energy. If you realize that you've had a tremendous number of experiences, but now you're back home. And now it's simply about being on this park bench and shining your light. Back at the zero point. Along the way, some Chamber dropped out, quite a few Chamber dropped out, uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, perhaps I offended him. I, I can't possibly imagine that, but um, perhaps I did. Uh, perhaps I even tried to get rid of them because they were so ingrained with their issues. They were so adamant about holding on to them and blaming somebody else. They were tilting at their windmills. They were fighting ghosts that weren't there. They were obsessed with their own 
challenges. They, they hung on to whether it was a family situation or a relationship or uh, their, their self-worth, whatever it happened to be. They really weren't ready to be here. And it was better for them not to be because it would have had an effect on everybody else. So many of you persisted. Uh, you made it this far. Now we're back at the zero point. Take a deep breath, and if you have any remaining issues, uh, self-worth issues, or any remaining doubts, take a deep breath and don't engage. Let them go. They're ready to go, really. They're ready to go. Don't engage. Just uh, and Calder's asking me, okay, is this being, is this being uh, innocent in the face of great battles? Is it being stupid? I guess is what he's asking. Is it is it being naive to basically ignore the issues? Not at all. The energy dynamics are so simple. If you engage with an issue, and you know what that's like, uh, like let's say it's an abundance thing, and you you've gone for what lifetimes, maybe decades with it. If you engage with it, it will continue to be there. If you realize that you're back at zero point, you're back in your own consciousness, in your own home, in your own energy. These things will just go away, without you having to focus on them without you having to sprinkle fairy dust on them, without uh, any sort of crystal healing or therapy, any of that. And then you're going to wonder why you didn't do this sooner, why I didn't tell you about it sooner. But uh, we'll talk about that at a later point. But right now, take a deep breath and allow yourself to come back to zero point. Yeah, you got all these numbers representing all of your experiences and all the things you've done, but you're back at zero point, and it's not a number. In other words, it's not an experience. It's who you are. Feel into that for a moment. It took you a while to get back here. You had to get through that myriad of all these numbers out there, all the experiences and, and all the things that you've gone through. Every number out there could be an identity that you had in the past or the past life or various identities in this lifetime. You had all those characters, all those aspects out there, but somehow you made your way back to the zero point. That's not another experience. It's not another character or aspect. It's who you are. You dove deep enough into it. You found your way here in spite of so many distractions, and now you're here. As I mentioned, some chamber dropped out along the way. They were too interested in causes and battles, and you've all seen it. And particularly in this uh, coronavirus era, uh, it's, it's ripe for battles and controversies and conspiracies and righteousness and everything else, none of it really matters. None of it matters to you anyway. It's not, it's not your battle anymore. So many insist on, on these fights, and they simply don't have a place with where we're going right now. They may, they may change, have a change of heart sometime in the future, but right now it's this group, you, this really quite dedicated group of Shambha around the world. So right now, take a deep breath and get comfortable on your own park bench, uh, whether you're sitting on one or not, whether you have one or not, but it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for a zero point, for coming back home to yourself. Surely with uh, ba battle weary and perhaps a lot of stories, a lot of numbers flying around, but now it's time to come back. Come back to yourself. And for the real reason, we're here. You're zero. <laughs> you're zero. And, and that's a good thing. And anyway, your, your core, your center point is zero. That's a good thing because now it doesn't have all the overlays of, of the past and old memories and old ghosts and everything else. 
that you're back home to yourself. It's the I am. I exist. And now it's your park bench. Uh, do you need a literal park bench? No, but it's not a bad idea to get one just as a, as a reminder, as a place to sit and a place to do what we're going to be doing. It's a, it's a good symbol, uh, but no, you don't actually have to have one. You can call a chair your park bench or you can call the toilet a park bench for all I care. It doesn't really matter, but just remember you're zero now. Zero is not a, just another number. Zero is you. It's consciousness. In this series, we're going to be doing active benching. Now, I'll be getting into that, and again, not that it takes a lot of teaching or explanation. We're just going to be doing it. But today, I wanted to start out, well, with the basics of the basics. Today, I wanted to start with the park benching 101. So let's put on some music and let's start with our park benching right here. Now imagine for a moment a house. We've got a large house with many, many rooms. We've been exploring these rooms and remodeling them and changing them around over the years, particularly since you began this journey. And, and I'm going to digress for a moment. This is not a spiritual journey, what you're on. Sometimes that can be such a distraction because uh, people think they're on a spiritual journey and then they think they have to act spiritual. They think they have to or can't eat certain things. They have to act a certain way. They have to be oming and oming all the time. and they have to be nice to everyone and they have to they can't smoke or drink or anything that's not spiritual that's a game that's another number on the board that's all it is it's another number or a combination of numbers and the interesting thing is so often not always but so often when people are being spiritual they're battling things within themselves i mean as simple as uh, saying well my your spiritual cult doesn't allow you to eat sugar, and now they're battling that sugar is somehow bad. Why? But sugar's bad, and now they're battling. So it's really not spiritual. And what we're doing isn't spiritual. What we're doing is simply about consciousness. It doesn't matter what you eat or drink or how profane your language might be or any of that. It, it's not about that. Not about trying to fix yourself or work off rough edges. You're, you're all of your, by nature, you're pirates. <laughs> so no, this is not a spiritual experience. Metaphysical maybe, but it's really about consciousness. So as you come back to the spiritual or the, the, as you come back to the zero point, don't worry about being spiritual. We're not, we're not. So you've got this large house and you've been roaming around in it, experiencing in it. It's kind of a symbol of, of your body. It's a symbol of your mind. I guess you could say the basement and the attic are symbols of subconscious and superconscious. Uh, but this has been your place and you spent a long time now trying to figure it out. How do you fix it up? How do you, how do you make it work for you? Oftentimes you didn't feel like you owned it, that it belonged to somebody else. But particularly now in these past, oh, 20 years that so many of us have been together for, or however long has it been that you've been with Crimson Circle, there's been another room that's being put together. And it's not one that the human planned and designed and has to go in and build. It's not one that the human has to go out and get the wood and materials for and get a hammer and nails or down on your knees putting in tile. It's not like that. This is a different room in your house. 
I'm just going to simply call it the zero room. It's being built on its own. And all the work you've been doing, all the dedication you've had, it's, it's just being built on its own. And it becomes a permanent addition to your house, to you, to your body, to your mind, to your life. And this room is different than the others. It doesn't have solid walls, doesn't have windows because it doesn't need it. Matter of fact, it's really not like any of the other rooms in your house. It's just light. It's just awareness and consciousness. And for a long time, this room has been under kind of a metaphysical construction. And sometimes you're aware of it, sometimes not. Sometimes you wondered what you needed to do to build this room. But for the most part, it was, you know, just keep your hands off of it. <laughs> Let it be built itself. It's the room of divinity. You've allowed it to be built. Who's building it? Well, you could say the master, the I am, it doesn't really matter, but it's yours. The room of light, the room of divinity. And it's that thing that shines. It's that thing that is radiance. And in this room of, of divinity, there is no agenda. It's never going to tell you what to do. It's simply going to shine a light. It's never going to give you some get rich quick scheme or it's never going to try to heal your body. This room has no agenda whatsoever. It is just light. But in that is everything. In that is, is all the potentials. And now here, as we start this series, I'd like you to go find that that door to the room. It's there. It's in, in your house. Your house, again, a metaphor, a symbol of your body and, and your mind and well, you in this life. I'd like you to go find it. Walk around the house, house a little bit. There's a door. Behind that door is, is your light. Of course, this is all just a, a metaphor for something very, very real, but so many of you will find, realize that the door has always been there. I never really asked what it was for. Sometimes you simply forgot about it. You realize it's always been there, but it was kind of ignored. It was kind of slightly out of consciousness. But now, dear friends, it's time to open that door. And put your hand upon that doorknob or that handle, whatever whatever way that door is designed to access, and then to take a deep breath and open that door. And let that light that is in this room, let it flood into the rest of the house now. You don't even have to walk into that room. You're welcome to if you want, but what happens now is you open that door and let that light flood in. It's the radiance. It's your divinity. Well, it's not going to go in and try to change everything in the house, but it will shine a light so you'll see things and be aware of things you never were before. You realize how magical your own house actually is. How you forgot about it a long time ago. Let that light 
Let it shine into your own house. This is the first step in the art of benching. It's not about doing it for the rest of the world or other people right now. Well, we'll come to that. But in this session, it's about park benching for yourself. Coming back to your zero point, coming back to you, your core, your consciousness, and letting that light shine. You do it first for yourself. You do it first for you. There's a radiance that just pours, it pours into your body, into your thoughts and your mind. And again, not, not trying to change anything, not trying to make you different, but shining a light that you can see who you really are and what you're really made out of. You're not made out of all those numbers we talked about. You're made out of consciousness and in you. Let that light now come forth from that room of your divinity. This is what dissolves away the, the last vestiges of the issues that you are holding on to, that you are battling and fighting and insisting on. This is what flows into this whole thing if you've had abundance problems. And it flows in and it shows you that there really is nothing holding you back from abundance. It's not going to do the work for you, but it's going to show you that it's going to show you that it never really was a real issue. It's just something you played with. It was another number on the board. And now you don't need it. Now you don't need it. Let that light shine into every part of you right now. Let it shine into your body. It's not going to try to change your biology, but it will make it very clear to you that, first of all, that that old body that you've been lugging around really wasn't yours. I will shine a light to show you what your real, what your true, what I call free energy body is. Let it shine into every part of your biology. Some of you may may have an illness or disease or diseases and aches and pains. Just let it shine in. Let it shine in because pretty soon Katumi is going to be working with you on, on your real light body. Let the light shine in right now so that when he starts working with you, you can easily and gracefully bring in that full light body. I know some of you have these, uh, oh, some demons in your mind. Demons in your mind. Those are, those are tough. Demons like lurking in the darkness, meaning that they're there because there's not a lot of consciousness. They're in the dark. They're kind of unaware, very limited. But when you open that door now to that room of divinity, and that light shines in, the demons go away. They can't stand the light. They need to work in the dark. They need to work in unawareness. So you find that these demons that you've been putting up with, Call them aspects, old voices that continue to try to beat you up. They can't stand the light. And it's you that's allowing the light in. I might be yelling at you to shut that door or telling you you're doing a stupid thing by letting the light in, but they're going to have to go away. They can only exist in the darkness, in a lack of awareness. We start the benching 
with you. A funny thing happens, you know, as you let that light in. Well, if you were standing outside your house, and what you'd suddenly see is this illumination through all the windows of the house. You know how you see a, a house in the early evening? Sun's gone down, but the sky still has a little bit of light in it, and suddenly the lights in the houses start coming on. That's such a beautiful sight. And that golden glow just pours out of the windows in the house. Uh, it looks so inviting, so warm and safe in there. That's what's happening right now. If, if you were to stand outside your house and watch, when you open that door of your divinity, the light just flooded in. Illuminating every part of your house, but shining out onto the yard. It really is this simple. You can make it more complex if you want, but it's as simple as saying, now it's time to let that light, that consciousness into every part of you. And then standing outside of the house, you look around the neighborhood, the other houses, and suddenly you see their lights coming on, one by one house by house, starting to light up the whole neighborhood. What a beautiful sight. Everything is quiet, peaceful, but all the lights start coming on. When you think at first that, oh, it's, it's the neighbors, it's some other people and getting dark out, so they're turning on their lights, but look again. It's not other people, it's other yous, it's your past lives. Because when you open that door in your house, it also opened a door in theirs. It's your past lives, your what you could call your future lives, even though you start to realize there's no such thing as past or future. They're just experiences. They're all numbers on the board. And you're the zero. You're the, you're the zero point. You're the core. And now these lights start turning on all around and on in the neighborhood and the porch lights and inside lights and street lights. This neighborhood is all you. It's all your energy. These are your past lives because right now, as you allow your realization and as you open the door to your divinity in this reality, it is illuminating all the other realities. It is illuminating all the other lifetimes. They are changing as a result. You are literally changing the past simply by opening the door to your divinity right now. When the street lights come on, you can almost smell the magic in the air. What's happening right now as you do this is every one of your other experiences, aspects, lifetimes, even alternative realities that you really have no concept of in your human mind, but the other numbers on the board, the numbers that went up and down and sideways and randomized and just out there, every one of those now is subject to your light. It's not just this being in this body and this mind in this lifetime. It's all that you are. Feel into that for a moment. The simple act, the simple art of benching starts with you, starts right now, and affects everything. 
that you are. That light is pouring out into your energy. That light is pouring out into every experience you had and even the experiences you didn't have. It's changing everything. That's why I've said for so very long, you're doing much more than you thought you were. You thought you were just trying to repair or fix this human in this lifetime. Not at all. A light is going out to every part of you. Take a deep breath and allow it now to flow. Just allow it. You don't have to work at it. You don't have to force it. Just allow that light to go on. in this house of you in this lifetime, but now spreading throughout the neighborhood, down the block. Lights going on everywhere. Every house representing a lifetime or an experience or a part of you, whether it's in this realm or another, and pretty soon All the houses are lit. It all started right here. At the zero point that you're at, coming back to zero, coming back to you. When it all starts as you park bench, for you. I know it's wonderful to think about we're going to be doing this, shining our light for the rest of the world, but it's most important to do it here first for yourself. Ah, let that let that light shine throughout you. Park bench for you right now. No agenda, no saying, here's what I need, here's what I don't have, here's what I'm worried about. None of that. Just light and consciousness and compassion flowing through every part of you, touching every part of your body. Going into every part of your memories. Every character, every personality, every persona you ever took on, even if, whether it was a life or an aspect or just something you did for a day, but that light now from your park bench, from your ground zero, going out to every part of you, not trying to change a thing, but simply saying, I am that I am, I exist. This is the art of benching. And this is why you chose to stay on the planet, eventually to shine that light out from your own home, from your own beingness to others who may or may not perceive it, it doesn't matter, but it starts here with you. Most people think, most people who believe in a past life, most people, they think that the past life is etched in concrete, written in stone, that it is what it is, not at all. What's happening right now in this very simple benching experience, that light is going out to every one of them and their lives are changing, their experience. Their numbers are no longer on that linear left to right path. 
using a very limited number of numbers to create experience, suddenly it all changes for them. And suddenly, instead of being stuck on a certain path, they're free. That also frees you. You've gotten this far, and I ask, I nearly beg, please, don't work on your problems. You really don't have any. Don't, don't engage in duality battles. So oh, the rest of the world, they're they're really good at it right now, and there's a lot of it going on, but. There's no need for you to do that. There's no battles. There's no causes. You are simply, simply consciousness and light on the planet. Don't get caught in their dramas. Don't get caught in your old problems. Don't, don't get sucked back into that duality. Come back to this park bench, your park bench. Come back to the zero point. I know at times uh, it's it's almost seductive for you to get back into the the old fights and the old battles, but don't come back to the ground zero point right here, your park bench. Take a deep breath and instead of battling with the problems or obsessing or worrying or anything else, take a deep breath and be in that light. That's it. Everything that you've considered a problem or a challenge is it dissolves away. There's no more fight, and there's no more suffering. Let's take a deep breath here in our first group park bench experience. This one's for you. You open that door of the light of divinity of consciousness and let it then permeate throughout your entire house and then into your neighborhood and then into every part of you. That is the zero point. That's what the park bench is for. Yes, it's pretty simple, but you have to go through a lot to get here. It's pretty simple indeed. So this is what we're here for. Not to solve problems and not to obsess about issues and not to worry about politics or not to struggle with health issues or money. Those are gone now. Those are behind you. We're here for the art of benching. With that, dear Chambro, take a very good deep breath. Take a very good deep breath. We'll come back in a month, and we'll continue to do our benching and talking and entertaining. But this one today is very special. It's all about you. With that, I am Adamus of Sovereign Domain on my park bench. So with that, let's take the good deep breath feeling into this message from Adamus, really feeling what it means to be at the park bench, on the park bench, your bench. Take the good deep breath and feel that zero point. Be there. Be with it. Take the good deep breath of life, honoring yourself, honoring yourself for all that you are. Be with that good deep breath, with energy flowing and allowing for you, for you. 
we close out this session. But remember, we'll be back in just one month for more of the art of benching. Thank you, everyone, for being a part of this adventure.